Goddess Kring Radio. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. Hey, check it out. I just got a new microphone. How does it sound, guys? This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. This is episode number three of my podcast. Today, it was a rainy, rainy day, and I got a new waterproof camera recently for my birthday, and I took some beautiful pictures of the vampire sky sunset that I saw recently. If you go to my Flickr, you can see it, or my Facebook, but uh, yeah, it's a waterproof camera. I, I took it in the bathtub with me, I took it in the shower, I put it into a mud puddle. Tonight, I actually had sushi with my boyfriend, and I put the waterproof camera inside my ice water, and I took some cool pictures of uh, something that looks really abstract and what it was was the flash was on and it, it photographed the straw and this red plastic ice water cup that I had my water in. So the funnest thing, because a few months ago my apartment got broken into and all my cameras got stolen and so to make a long story short I've ended up replacing them all thanks to the support of my fans and I, the waterproof camera was the last thing that needed to be replaced. And now I have a new waterproof camera. I used to have a Canon, now I have a Fuji. And the funnest thing about waterproof cameras is, you know, you can run around and if it's raining and not worry about getting it wet. Uh, but what I really like to do with a waterproof camera is to like stick it in things, like stick it into um, glass bottles of water and shoot photos through the water, take it into the bathtub, swimming pools. I swam in Green Lake with it once. It's just so fun to see the different shapes and patterns and, and water bubbles that you can get. You can take a bubble bath with it. You know, you can take selfie nudes with it and show your <laughs> boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever you want to show that kind of thing with. Uh, or you can take, you know, just selfies of your face and show the general population. So I love to create. So I'm hoping this microphone sounds a lot better. I actually made my own windscreen for it. And with a nylon, I put like some pantyhose nylons on it. And I think it's actually windscreening pretty well. Cranberry, 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 cranberry I bloom through the roots, in cahoots, sliding doors, eyes adores, ocean beams, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams, black fire, strain the stream of consciousness again, volcano ash, erupting green, enchanted fingers, Filter rain, filter rain filter down the drain, down the drain, in chain, in chain, again, 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 again. So I guess I'll talk a little bit more about my job as a freelance person. Uh, I think this week I have about three art modeling jobs, which means I'm nude and posing in front of drawing and painting students at three different art schools, and then I have two medical modeling jobs where I pretend to be a patient and then medical students do examinations on me and uh, breast exams and pelvic exams and I give them feedback on their physical technique and their palpations as well as their medical language and then I also have two natural organic food demos that I'm doing at a natural food store and I also have a therapy group that I just uh, got invited to be part of a support group for people dealing with anxiety and depression and various um, emotional challenges. So I'm doing that and it's free with my health care, which is amazing. Uh, the, the interesting strategy that I have for surviving without realizing that it was a, a strategy was um, since our health care system is, is so um, mostly for profit in the United States of America, I am a low-income person and I get uh, free health care and what's funny is that it's in my best interest actually to stay low-income 
because if I make more than I think 1900 or $2,000 as a single person, I will have to start paying a lot of money for my health care. And I also have some student loan debt and the student loan people will come after me if I don't stay low income. So what's funny is there's basically people that make more money than me that are worse off than me. It's almost like you have to be low income or doing really, really well financially in order to be okay in this country. So because I am low income enough, you know, I can qualify for free health care. Uh, paid for with taxes, I guess, and I can have the student loan people not be on my back because I certainly can't afford to pay that back right now. So I'm low income. I don't even actually know how to make a lot more money than I'm already making, but um, yeah, I do art model gigs, medical model gigs. Uh, I've done focus groups. I've been hired as a photographer. I've sold like hand painted shoes. You know, I've just done a lot of different things. And I think that uh, all of the full-time jobs I've had have been like minimum wage, you know, not, not good. And ironically, since I've gone freelance, in 1997 was when I uh, went full-time as a freelance art model and artist in general. So I've made more money doing that than I ever did at my normal, my so-called normal jobs. <laughs> so interesting interesting to work with medical students and art students and just various different things that I've done for a living so I also do store audits and I've delivered groceries which at the moment is not going well because I had Wi-Fi issues and smartphone app issues last time I tried to do that so I actually had to end my shift early but it was going okay for a while I've done that off and on for the last few weeks and this is my new microphone. I hope it sounds good. I hope this is working out okay. And I'm going to check the levels now. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. Thanks for tuning in. I welcome your questions and comments. If you have any certain question you want me to address on my show, send it to me. Email it to me. Go to shannonkringen.com. Contact me. Find my email and ask me ask away and i'll say your question on the air i'll even mention your name if you want or you can be anonymous either way i welcome questions and comments totally 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 tubular okay there it is i'm from california so i can say totally tubular totally tubular right right almighty would you like to watch the telly would you like to rub me belly that's what i used to say on my goddess kring tv show <laughs> Okay, there it is. Hide our beauty under a bushel no more. A group of women joined in hypocrisy. Con, 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 con. con. <laughs> Fooling even Cali man, or is it Cali man? Anger be gone, right wrong, left right, stage fright, northern Halifax. Facts. Who needs facts when you have scapegoat desires, pelting lies, hot like candles melting fast, near the troll? Validate that parking, you bet. Gal, gal, gal. Blooming apples, healing heroes, seek zero. Saved from the weed whacker. We sit under the bridge, mount free, hide our beauty under a bushel no more. We are creatures of variety, will of good, new in this hood. Redefining the tree, rusty just us, thrust us into apple steps, apple steps. I will share something really positive that happened. I don't want to share the details of what this is because this is, you know, public and I don't want to just spill my guts in every possible way. Only in certain ways would I like to spill my guts and confess to you. <laughs> but let's just say that um, 
I have been on a waiting list for a year and a half or maybe even a little longer than that. And my name was pulled and called on this waiting list. And so next week I get to go to an, a two hour orientation that teaches me about what this means for my name to have been called. And to make a long story short, I'm very nervous about it and I hope that I can comply with the rules that I'm taught during this two hour orientation. If so, if I think it's realistic for me to go forward with this, I may have to ask somebody in my life if they're if they will go along with this change with me. And if so, it will improve my life financially. It will lift a financial burden off me. So I'm really, really hoping that this will happen. And you know, another amazing magical synchronistic thing about it is that I work full time freelance and I'm on call seven days a week. And when I got the letter in the mail saying that I was chosen for this thing that I was on a waiting list for, for like got a year and a half, I was like, oh no, I hope I don't have to work that day. And sure enough, I looked to my calendar and I don't work that day, which is an absolute miracle because a lot of times I work seven days a week. Like literally I work Saturday and Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then again on Monday. So there it is. So which I partly like. I'm partly learning how to, how to actually rest more, but I have a tendency to just want to work every single day. Since I don't have any kids or anything, I just have a cat and a boyfriend, and I don't have a very active social life. My social life mostly is about uh, sharing on social media, sharing my art, and hanging out with my cat and going for walks in nature. So when I'm not actually working and making money or I'm running errands and getting good bargain deals and driving around in my car and stocking up on, I go to Linwood and I get artesian well water because I don't want any chlorine or fluoride in my water. Uh, but I was going to say that this thing might really improve my financial life and lift a burden for me, but it's just miraculously miraculous that I can go to this two hour orientation. And then the same day later in the day, I have a therapy support group, which is also very good timing uh, because I'm nervous about this two hour meeting and I'm hoping it goes well. And I just want to receive support, give and, re give and receive support and learn some skills with some other people. So yeah. And I work almost every, well, I actually, I work every other day of the week, including Saturday and Sunday. So it's actually a miracle that on the weekday that this meeting is happening. It just, it makes me feel like, hey, maybe it's meant to be for me to definitely go to this meeting and learn because I have to go in order to receive the benefit. So um, I want to learn and I want to push past my fears. It's also amazing that I have a boyfriend right now. I know that sounds so normal to most people to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but for me, I've had a really, 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 really rocky love life for the last literally 30 years. 30 years ago, I was what, like, um, well, I'm 48, so was I 18? So there it is. So... <laughs> Yeah, let's not get into the details of my past love life, but let's just say it's been very challenging and I don't really blame all the people that I dated. I partly, um, I'm responsible myself partly for, it's true, I chose people that perhaps I wasn't compatible with, but I also uh, was very moody and insecure and had issues, let's just say, and perhaps the people that I chose to date or oh, did not bring out the best in me, or perhaps I didn't bring out the best in them. I don't know. All I know is the person I'm with now, we have a lot of differences, and yet we have enough in common that we click, and we're definitely romantically attracted to each other, and we don't live together. We might live together someday, but for now, I really like my own space, and I'm so, so, so grateful. It's had a stabilizing effect on my mental health to have a consistent man in my life that I can share a strong friendship with, as well as a romantic, you know, affection and attraction and sexuality and all of that fine stuff. So I am very, very grateful to have a stable love life. As of now, it's 
2016. That's what I need to do. I need to work on my 2017 calendar. I use a paper calendar since most things are uh, digital these days. I love the fact that I can get my artwork. I upload my artwork to a various uh, websites and I get them, pr I get my designs and photos printed. I do abstract designs and I've had them printed onto bags. Uh, I sometimes hand paint bags and shoes, but right now I have a recent design called Mapping Internal Lands printed onto a bag and it looks great. And I also have for the last uh, several years, I've had calendars made that are like day planners because my schedule is so complicated. I have to write everything down and because I, I model for, you know, various art schools and medical schools and I just do all these different things for a living in terms of focus groups and demos and all this kind of stuff. And I love taking a pen and writing on paper with a pen. It's so exotic these days because everything is typed out and on like devices, etc. So I want to make my 2017 calendar because this year is almost over. And I'm so excited that the election is almost over and we can just move on from that and, and do whatever we need to do to try to survive and thrive and guiding the unwinding lines of the tide. I just popped into my head. So, bada boo, bada bing, stinging rings the cring. Catch the wind song spiral drive, crack the code, left and right node. So that's part of one of my poems. So thank you for listening, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. So... I have to get up at 6.30 in the morning, which is not my favorite time. So I have uh, art modeling and therapy and a nice bike ride and lots of time to dream and rest. And there it is. Blue, blue lipstick, lipstick, pencils tagging, amber melts the sand, waiting rugs, tilting lens, green peach skin, swirling marble, stay away from beige, you say, embrace shadow we may, sweeping broom, sweeping broom, sweeping broom. Justify solitude, just to fight, just to fight, just to dismissive ability, not casual yet professional. Hey, this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. Thanks for tuning in to my podcast radio show. I want to talk about narcissism right now. I just looked up the definition of narcissism because there's times when I've been accused of being a narcissist. And there's times when I when I worry about that. Generally, narcissists tend to think they're never wrong about anything and they don't really have empathy for other people and they don't really question what they do. So I'm probably not really a narcissist. But the reason why some people think that I am and the reason why sometimes I think that I could be is because I am preoccupied with myself and I take hundreds and hundreds of self-portraits, but that's part of my artwork, as well as here I am sitting by myself recording my voice and liking the sound of my own voice. And yet I think, well, that maybe that's healthy because there are people who, who record their own voice and say that they don't like the sound of their own voice. So it's sad that we seem to think it's okay to put yourself down and say that you hate the sound of your own voice or that you're not photogenic or not creative and it's like well isn't it healthier to think of yourself as having a nice voice to think of yourself as being creative as being talented you know etc doesn't mean that I don't also think other people are talented so I guess I wanted to talk about that. I think that's one of my main issues in life is, is being afraid of being judged for being too self-centered, for being self-indulgent, too self-confident. You know, if someone is a, is a total like, you know, if someone is really arrogant and thinks they're better than other people, that's kind of a, a nasty thing. 
But what if somebody has self-confidence? And I also wanted to say part of what drives me actually to record my voice like this and to do a lot of self-portraits and to do the monologues that I did on video for 15 years on Seattle Public Access Television is actually a combination of me being insecure about myself and wanting to prove that I exist to the audience as well as to myself to try to reassure myself to try to feel better and build confidence. I think part of also being a nude model for artists because I'm certainly not perfect. My body is not perfect. And you know, when you're a figure model nude in front of people, you know, they're all looking at you and drawing you and painting you and sculpting you. And nobody is perfect. I mean, all of the other figure models I know, none of our bodies are perfect. Some of us are more fit and trim than others. And we all have different body types different scars and birthmarks on our skin. I mean, none of us are perfect. None of us look like Hollywood rock star perfection, you know, Barbie doll type humans. So we're all here modeling and, you know, doing the best we can to hold dynamic poses and hold still for people. So it's not really about thinking that you're perfect, thinking that you're so beautiful. And yet at the same time, it is about loving yourself and accepting yourself and recognizing your own beauty. So I guess that's that's one of my juicy topics that I like to think about in life is, you know, I like to say healing reveals the dreams, meaning that if you, if you're afraid to really f be self-indulgent in terms of following your own dreams, because other people are going to think you're selfish or you're, oh, you're so into yourself. I know people have have criticized successful people, you know, generally speaking, like Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. She gets criticized a lot. I've heard people say she's narcissistic. Somebody said recently, uh, a fellow woman said she used to like Oprah, but now she's just kind of thinks that she's kind of a narcissist. She puts herself, Oprah puts herself on the cover of her own magazine for every issue. I don't feel that way. I, I really like Oprah Winfrey. I think Oprah is a black woman who's very powerful and she's even overweight and yet she's very successful so despite our culture's prejudice against women who are of color who are overweight all of those things work against her in our culture and yet look at what Oprah has done I mean she's tried to spread a good message and raise the consciousness of a lot of people with her lately her spiritual messages so I really admire Oprah Winfrey and you know, if I had my own magazine, I'd probably be on the cover of it every month too. <laughs> so, cause I love self portraits and, um, I just, it doesn't bother me. Like if someone is doing what they love, I guess the bottom line is if you're, if you love to do self portraits, if you love to record your own voice, if you love to write songs, if you love to write, if you love to sing and dance and act, whatever it is you love to do. If you love to highlight other people, then do that. So I guess the bottom line is I need for me anyway. And hopefully I'm inspiring, you know, anyone. Thank you for listening, whoever you are that's listening. Thank you so much. Um, I, I like to think that if we do what we love, you know, then it will it will be of value to others. And I guess that's a tricky one. So I think my favorite songwriter, Tom Petty, has said something similar, and Tori Amos. Tori Amos and Tom Petty are two of my favorite musical songwriter composers, and they both have said things similar to the fact that their job is to kind of get out of their own way, and their job is just to write the best songs that they can write and share it with an audience. So I really um, admire people who have the audacity, I guess, and the guts to just do what they love even if other people criticize it and think it's self-centered, self-indulgent, narcissistic, you know, whatever the judgments are. And again, I feel like what I do with my self-portrait photography is in a way it's because I'm insecure and I want to prove that I'm photogenic or prove that I have beauty and value, prove that I'm a good artist. But I also like to do self-portraits and record my own voice because I have the confidence to do so. So I think it's a combination of maybe it's the tension between the two opposites of feeling really insecure and unsure of myself and having self-doubt 
And then also having a certain amount of confidence like, oh yeah, well, I'm going to do this because I think I'm good at this and I'm just going to do it. And even if I'm not good at it, I'm going to learn how to be good at it. So it's kind of like I'm determined to express myself. Another thing is that I'm actually quite shy in some ways socially. I'm a little uncomfortable and shy around people to some extent. And I feel like I'm supposed to tiptoe and not make too much noise and not take up too much space. And so when I record my voice and take photos of myself or even just my art in general, like uh, last night I took some beautiful landscapes of the amazing sunset we had last night near Seattle. We had this amazing sunset where the water was lit up all red and somebody said it looked like a vampire sky. So I actually borrowed that title. Thank you, whoever it was. I forgot who said that, Vampire Sky. It does look like a vampire sky, especially because it's around Halloween time. So as I'm recording this, it's, it's October of 2016. So I just want to say thank you for listening. So basically, I partly share my art and express myself because I, I just feel comfortable actually expressing like I feel really chaotic and like almost like Humpty Dumpty like I'm falling apart and what makes me feel held together and supported is to have a container to express myself in which is my website uh, videos that I make my photography my art modeling jobs basically my all of my jobs you know I deliver groceries I model for medical students I model for art students all of that do you know the lady Temple Grandin She's autistic and she has a PhD in animal behavioral science. There's a movie about her, Temple Grandin, Thinking in Pictures, starring Claire Danes. Very good movie. I highly recommend it. Temple Grandin is a fascinating human being because she's pretty autistic and yet she's able to communicate what it's like to be autistic to try to explain that her brain is different. And I feel a kinship with some of what she says about it just it's just hard to explain but in the movie she actually in real life got into a, a cattle there's the things that squeeze cattle and it calms them down and she made a squeeze box for herself and it calmed her down when she was emotionally getting upset as an autistic person being overstimulated and I feel like that I feel like the equivalent for me is doing my artwork is taking photos recording my voice, making videos, even modeling for art classes, I feel like a sense of self-containment, like something is holding me when I have a purpose. And, you know, because sometimes I feel really scattered all over the place, even when I just pet my cat or take a walk. I guess these are all coping mechanisms because I have a lot of anxiety and depression and OCD tendencies. And so to cope and make myself feel better, I do my artwork, I share it with an audience, and I pet my cat, I hang out with plants and animals, I walk in nature. I guess that's what human beings do, is, is we do things to help ourselves feel better when we're upset. That's part of the challenge of being a human. So I just wanted to share all of this, and I, I'm still pondering about, am I a narcissist? You know, I don't want to put myself down. I'm not saying that to, to be um, self um you know, to abuse myself, but I'm honestly looking at this like maybe I'm a little narcissistic. Maybe maybe a lot of artists are like Pablo Picasso, Frida Kahlo, Cindy Sherman, a lot of artists who do tons and tons of self portraity kind of things. I don't know. But what is narcissism? Is being in love with your own reflection, being focused on yourself. Maybe in order to be a powerful artist, you have to be kind of self-indulgent, self-centered. I mean, I'm using my own body as a, as a uh, you know, I'm kind of a performance artist, sort of, and so I'm using myself as a character in my movie, you know? Like, I'm documenting my life, recording this podcast. I'm also, you know, I mean, I encourage you, whoever it is that is listening, I am open to questions and comments. If you want me to respond to anything on the air, send me an interesting question and I will respond and I will talk about it. But I encourage you to do what you love. Do more. I think the world would be better if more people had the courage and the audacity to do what they love and what they believe in 
And don't listen to people who discourage you or say, oh, you can't do that. You're too old. You're too young. You're too this. You're too that. Do what you love, even if it's only like an hour a day or, you know, paint, draw, sing, dance, act, go back to school, study something, take a class, learn something, whatever it is. Like, I need to follow my own advice as well. I kind of want to take more acting classes sometimes. I'm kind of scattered all over the place. About a year ago, I went to England. I kind of want to go on another trip. I have relatives in Santa Barbara, California that have invited me to visit them. So maybe I should do that. I have frequent flyer miles. And also I want to say I, I had a, my cameras were stolen a few months ago. Somebody broke into my apartment, long story. And I actually had a GoFundMe and my fans stepped in and helped me out. And so I replaced most of the cameras that were stolen. I mean, with different but similar cameras. And my dad actually gave me a, a small check for my birthday. And so I, I ran out to a, a, a store and got this waterproof camera. And I took some really cool pictures of the sunset last night. And then I took pictures in the shower. If you photograph yourself with a waterproof camera with a flash in the shower, the water stream looks like diamonds and jewels. And it's so magical. And I, I posted some of those. I did it in sepia tone. So I did some beautiful pictures of the sunset last night. And uh, if you go to my Instagram or my Flickr, you can see them. Just Google Shannon Kringen, uh, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-K-R-I-N-G-E-N, Shannon Kringen. If you just Google my name, you can find me on Flickr and Instagram. And I share my photos for free everywhere. And I love to share freely under a Creative Commons license. If you like this podcast, feel free to share it anywhere you want. It's Creative Commons. Share and share alike for free. So I hope I'm inspiring you or entertaining you in some way. Again, thank you for listening. Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen is my name. I'm a multimedia artist slash figure model for a living. And that was fun. Yeah, maybe I'll play some of my musical poetry next. Do you like a spot of tea and when I used to up for college? Do you like a spot of tea and when I used to up for college to go watch the telly? And the year less that she always rub my belly. Yeah, let me unbar, yeah, let me unbar. The year less that she always rub my belly. Snooze, blues, no, I do good news. Integrate the carrots, capiche? Integrate the carrots, capiche? Integrate the carrots, capiche? Then we are going to go down to the bridge. I am going, I am going down, snowed me up. Still, she must says, Oh, give Louis, dear, we seem to set our golden over of the seat, set our golden over, set our golden over of the seat, set our golden over, snowmob, 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 set our snowmob, golden over, set our snowmob, golden over, snowmob, or of the seat, yell. This show has been 
digitized to hide my obscene body parts. I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat. So what you just listened to was the Goddess Kring uh, theme song for my TV show, uh, sort of unofficially. That's one of the musical things that I came up with a friend of, I think it was a guy named Maxie who worked with me on that many, many years ago. Actually, that's from the 90s, that clip you just heard. And then the poem before that was my voice backwards in an experiment that I did with another friend of mine named Nibby Nebulous. I also worked with a really cool guy named Claxton Kent, also known as Von Hummer, in Portland, and I'm waiting to hear back from him about permission to use the music that he and I created together. We actually performed at Chop Suey in Seattle as part of Magma Fest, as well as, I think, the... Oh, shoot, now I forgot. We performed at a couple different places. Um... One of them was Chop Suey for Magma Fest, and one of them was that place that I forgot the name of. There it is. Okay. So this is Shannon Kringen. You're listening to Goddess Kring Radio. This is my weekly podcast. It'll be 60 minutes every week. Feel free to write me with questions or comments. And I guess this week's episode is obviously me doing random monologues. In between, I am splicing some musical poetry that I created experimentally. Well, what you just heard was this cool thing it's actually available for free to download as a ringtone for your cell phone. That's actually my voice doing one of my poems uh, played backwards and with added effects and echo and reverb and layers and harmonizing layers on it and all that kind of jazz. So I love the sound of my voice backwards. I get I kind of trip out on that. It kind of reminds me of Norwegian. Uh, hope Hopefully that's not insulting to anyone listening that speaks Norwegian because I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I actually really like the sounds of other languages aside from English. English is nice, but it's fun to hear other languages. I actually visited 
Oslo, Norway in 2008. I visited a friend that invited me and I got to stay there for about two weeks in Oslo and I loved hearing the Norwegian being spoken. My friend said uh, that grew up in Norway and was born there and speaks very good English. She told me that Swedish is actually quite similar to Norwegian and when she hears Swedish people speak she can understand almost everything they say. So I didn't really realize that Swedish and Norwegian were similar languages. They sound different to me but I guess the vocabulary might be similar. So yeah, today was a very, very rainy, stormy, dark sky day. And I wanted to, oh, share something exciting. Um, I, Goddess Kring, am going to be part of a video of mine from 20 years ago, 1996, is going to be part of a screening in Brooklyn, New York on November 4th and 5th. If anybody listening is in Brooklyn, New York, you're in luck because I think it's free. It's a screening of... Uh, Joni for Jackie Forever in conjunction with Miranda July, Big Miss Moviola, um, Riot Girl fanzine poetry. There's a documentary film made. There's a website. I need to find out where that URL is. But in Brooklyn, November 4th and 5th at 7 p.m., there is a free, I believe, screening of a movie, Joni for Jackie Forever. And let me find that website right now. Okay, I found the website and I guess I'm going to read from it. Um, Goddess Kring, me, one of my videos is part of a screening in Brooklyn, New York. It is now November of 2016 as I'm recording this. So Goddess Kring is part of an event in Brooklyn. I'm part of, my video anyway, is part of an exhibition called We Are What We Archive. Experience a chain letter as it was originally viewed. Introducing the, sc introducing the screening will be an authentic Joni for Jackie title sequence made by the artist K8 Hardy. Filmmakers will be in attendance. I, I won't be there, but featuring the work of Cosette Carroll, Dulcie Clarkson, Kurthy Fix, Dara Greenwald, K8 Hardy, Vanessa Herotian, I don't know how to say your name, Vanessa, I'm sorry, I forgot how to pronounce your last name, um, Cara Harold, Sarah Jacobson, Sarah Kennedy, Shannon Kringen, which is me, Penny Lane, Rohisha Hamilton Metcalf, Sativa Peterson, Vanessa Rennick, Emily Richardson, Tina Spangler, Deborah Stratman, and Kat TYC. So it's Joni for Jackie is a lo-fi VHS distribution, distribution project of short work by women. Born out of the 1990s cultural movement of riot girl conventions, punk music, and cheap fanzine production, Joni for Jackie was developed before the internet and before peer-to-peer -peer file exchange. Conceived by filmmaker Miranda July in 1995, the project supported communication and connections between female media makers across the United States. Every woman who participated in turn received a compilation chain letter VHS in which they found their video contextualized with at least nine other filmmakers' work. No submission was rejected. So that's the part that I'm, that my little Goddess Kring clip is part of, and I'm happy to be in the company of these other talented, interesting, unique artists that are all women. And there's also a November 4th at 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, um, Pure and Magic, Pure and Magical Pussy Power is a screening and roundtable discussion with Joni for Jackie filmmakers. So that's another event that's going to happen. Uh, if you just go to shannonkringen.com and look at my live journal or my WordPress or my Tumblr, I mention links to all of this. It's in, um, let's see, it's in Brooklyn on November 4th and 5th. And now I'm just looking for the address, which I actually have somewhere. <laughs> Let me look this up here. Thanks for tuning in. Let me see. It's um, in Brooklyn. 
Film screening Joni for Jackie Forever in Brooklyn, November 4th and 5th at 7 p.m. 2016. The address is 131 8th Street, number 4, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. And the website this is on is called Interference Archive, I think, dot org. Yeah, interferencearchive.org. Film screening Joni for Jackie Forever. If you Google that, you'll find that. Or go to shannonkringa.com and click on my live journal or my WordPress or my Tumblr or find me on Google+. Plus. I, I uh, tend to cross post all these interesting little tidbits on my blogs. So I'm really happy. Little did I know that uh, 21 years ago, I sent Miranda July a little video of my little goddess Kring thing doing a monologue with face paint. Uh, one of the screenshots of it got onto flavorwire.com. That's fun to see me from 21 years ago when I was, gosh, I was in my 20s. I'm 48 right now. So 21 years ago, I was a lot younger. So I'm happy to be a part of that with the other interesting creative filmmaker ladies. I wish I could be there, but I won't be in Brooklyn on the <laughs> in November. But uh, I hope somebody listening and I've got some uh, friends online that live near Brooklyn and New York and Manhattan and all of that jazz so hopefully they'll go and check it out or maybe people that have never heard of my art before will will learn about me and all the other interesting artists involved so little did I know that 21 years later I would be part of a screening in Brooklyn that's interesting and Miranda July if you are not familiar with her she's a pretty interesting unique artist and I met her over 20 years ago. I used to work at a Xerox place and she actually came in to make Xeroxes of her big Miss Moviola uh, fanzine magazine thingy McJagger, a kind of a homemade kind of a thing she was doing. And that's how I found out about big Miss Moviola is what it was called before Joni for Jackie. Uh, it's been called different names, I think. But when I heard about it first, it was called Big Miss Moviola. And I sent in a small donation with a VHS video of a little goddess cream clip. And she put that on the chain letter, I think, number 10 with nine other women. So nine of us or 10 of us got like short little clips. And we all got to see each other's little videos that we made. And that was just distributed between everyone who donated, I guess, to Miranda to help her pay for the cost of, of duplicating and making like edits of these little unique homemade videos. So it was like a chain letter, like a video chain letter. And uh, Miranda July recently, uh, she writes, she's written and directed films and won the Cannes Jury Prize uh, Film Award, I think a few years ago for me and you and everyone we know she did a new movie a newer movie called the future and she's written novels and she's just a very unique interesting artist check her out miranda july so there it is and i'm happy that i'm involved in part of that so how funny is it that i'm extremely shy and insecure in some ways and yet here i am doing this podcast every week and i'm a nude model and I did my Goddess Kring TV show for 15 years. I danced around nude. I said a lot of really brave things. It's just kind of like an interesting contradiction in the personality of some people that they're sort of like uh, introverted extrovert, extroverted introvert, kind of like uh, are fine with being on stage, are fine with opening themselves up to people in a certain way with a microphone or a video camera as well as when I when I model in front of a bunch of people it just feels kind of normal to me and I, I remember my first modeling gig in 1991 or 92 in the winter I think it was in Seattle at Cornish College of the Arts and I remember I I modeled I was hired I had really hardly any experience at all I've just modeled for some photographers actually some friends of mine that were talented uh, photographers took some pictures of me and they turned out so well that I even though I was kind of shy I kind of wanted to be photographed and see how good I could look and see if I could create something beautiful and I used those snapshots to land a trade for prints gig with a photographer a fine art nude black and white photographer who did film way back in the 90s 
and I posed for him and he, he traded, you know, there was no payment involved and I just modeled trade for prints. He gave me this beautiful eight by 10 fine art nudes that he took of me. I used uh, those fine art nudes to land the modeling job at Cornish College of the Arts here in Seattle. And I still model uh, there today, along with many, many, many other art schools in Seattle, like Gage Academy of Fine Art, um, Cornish, the UW, you know, all the different community colleges. So, uh, yeah, lots of really cool art schools around here in the Art Institute and just lots of different places where I actually work and I model and forgot what I was going to say. I just, I remember my first modeling job at Cornish. I wasn't sure how comfortable I would be. I think my fear was that I would have to itch and that I would ruin the pose if I moved and itched. And then I realized as long as I got right back into the pose, you know, if I had a scratch on my arm or something, I could like, you know, really quickly scratch and then go right back into the pose. But I generally can ignore if I have an itch somewhere or a tickle or I'm uncomfortable, I can generally ignore it and just stay really, really, really still and hold uh, an interesting asymmetrical pose. And then they draw me or paint me. And usually figure models get a break every every 20 minutes or so we get a five minute break. And then if it's a three or four hour class, we usually get a 15 minute break in the middle, sometimes up to a 30 minute break. Some of the four hour classes I model for, um, they give students and me both a 20 to 30 minute break in the middle of the class, which thankfully I am paid for because as a model, you get paid for the whole three or four hours that you're there. So that includes the breaks. So that's, that's it on the modeling. And um, one thing led to another and I've worked with lots of photographers. Uh, again, though, I will say <laughs> I'm most comfortable when I photograph myself. Uh, I have worked with some great photographers who have brought out the best in me, but generally speaking, uh, mo uh, modeling for photographers is, I don't think that's my biggest talent. I think my biggest talent is probably taking pictures, not just of me, but taking pictures of animals and the texture on leaves and plants and portraits of animals and just amazing. Like anytime I see anything amazing, like in terms of light or shape or color or texture, I have a background in graphic design. So I feel like a lot of my really, really good photographs I can say are a direct result of my background in design because I, I kind of know the whole composition, color, golden proportion. You know, I, I'm i very sensitive to the lines and the shapes and the colors within the frame. I really, really did well in design classes. I kind of have, I think, maybe a natural intuitive sense of what's good design and what looks good in the frame in terms of composition and the shape and the you know the golden proportion you know the certain like three-quarter triangular shapes that kind of balance and like make you want to keep looking at an image I think I have kind of an intuitive sense of that but I was also taught design rules I guess as a teenager and my mom is also a visual artist and she kind of raised me with lots of, of design, graphic design books and beautiful, beautiful art on the walls in our house and, you know, mostly Hunderwasser, like prints of Hunderwasser. And there it is. So I'm, I'm fortunate that I was, you know, some aspects of my childhood were very difficult. We moved around a lot. There was lots of marriages and divorces and adults around me that were trying to grow up and learn things and so they were a bit distracted and I didn't really get as much attention or stability as I probably needed to fully thrive and have a really high self-esteem. That's the dark side. The light side or the great side, I'm very, very fortunate that my parents and my grandparents raised me with good music, good art, uh, fairly good like food and nutrition and education and so I think I got enough of a foundation to do as well as I'm doing right now. 
And I do struggle with insecurity and fear of success, fear of failure, of course, everyone I think fears failure, but I I think I almost fear success more than I fear failure, you know, afraid of that I'm an egomaniac if I'm too confident and I know that I have certain talents and I know our culture teaches us to not brag about our talent, Uh, but I do agree with the quote about what we really fear is how great we are and that it doesn't help the world to shrink. So, you know, if you shine your light, you can help others. And if someone is jealous of you, uh, you need to, you know, try to turn that into inspiring them. But if someone is going to be really negative and like be jealous of you and competitive with you, I don't know if you can really do anything about that. The best thing to do is, you know, try to uplift them if you can, if not tune it out, especially if they're bullies. You know, I was bullied a lot as a kid because I was kind of a weird little kid. I mean, I, I was a nice little girl, but I was kind of strange and, um, kind of shy socially. And I kind of would stare at people and, I feel like I got picked on a lot, especially by girls. And I have a tendency, I was going to say, to feel jealous and envious of other people. And I know that the reason why I take responsibility for that, the reason why, and I I partly avoid making friends with people. I I call it avoid dance, avoid dance, a dance of being in the void. Maybe because I'm introspective and introverted and I I like solitude, but I think it's also partly a wound. I also partly feel competitive and jealous of other people and I don't like that. It's very uncomfortable because I like being kind and I I have a lot of empathy and so it's just really like I have conflicts, let's just say. And I get along best with plants and animals, although I do have a wonderful boyfriend in my life and I do have some online friends and so my point is, what is my point? I don't know. I'm just being honest. It's like I have like a certain amount of confidence and but I was going to say I am afraid of my own ego. I'm kind of afraid of being too confident. Um, But that's silly because the world is not really served by me putting myself down. The world is not really served by me feeling bad about myself or being all, you know, fakely humble. I mean, it's good to be humble. But if you're just being humble because you're afraid to be too confident, you know, then that maybe that's, well, false humidity, I guess that's what that is. So <laughs> yeah, I'm rambling, 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 rolling, 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 rawhide, rolling, 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 got a screen, got a screen, got a screen, green, 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 rolling, roll. No, I like to say intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. Fragile sense of self, intangible desire for wealth. Authentic ejaculation of my soul, molten orange liquid glow. Anger takes its toll, blowing status quo. So yeah, intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. So I'm trying to like learn how to have a stronger sense of self without being afraid that it's egotistical. So I do have over 900 self-portraits on my Flickr, in my Flickr album that's uh, self-portraits. I also have like portraits of animals and landscapes and macro photography and visual haiku and lots of really gorgeous images on my Flickr that I've had for like 11 years. But I will say that over 900 self-portraits is a bit carried away. But then again, a lot of them are really quite beautiful. I think at least 200 of them are really, really works of art. Uh, if I had uh, uh, the time and the resources, I might like print out a whole bunch of these and have a show. I, I have had shows at galleries a few times, sort of non-juried galleries. I was chosen as featured artist a few times. I think 2003 and 2008 maybe a third time. I don't remember what year that was, but I did print out like 212 by 18 images and I I made kind of wallpaper on the walls and it was really fun to sort of decorate the entire front room of this art gallery downtown Seattle uh, with my images and sort of celebrate my creativity. So express yourself. Be yourself, no matter what they say. There's that Sting song, Englishmen in New York. That's where I got that phrase from, be yourself, no matter what they say. 
So don't let the bastards get you down. Don't let the bastards get you down. So yeah, don't let anybody bully you, including yourself. The biggest bully I have in my life is me. Although lately I've been actually pretty loving towards myself, but let's just say that when I'm upset, my biggest uh, uh, problem is my own dark side, my own little inner Darth Vader that's inside my own psyche. So I need to focus on the Luke Skywalker and the Yoda within me and go ahead and tell the Darth Vader to sit and have a cup of tea and calm down, Mr. Darth Vader. We want to mostly be Luke Skywalker and Yoda. <laughs> there it is. Goddess Kring Radio. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Although lately I've been actually pretty loving towards myself, but let's just say that when I'm upset, my biggest uh, uh, problem is my own dark side, my own little inner Darth Vader that's inside my own psyche. So I need to focus on the Luke Skywalker and the Yoda within me and go ahead and tell the Darth Vader to sit and have a cup of tea and calm down, Mr. Darth Vader. We want to mostly be Luke Skywalker and Yoda. <laughs> there it is. Goddess Kring Radio. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen.